What's up everyone? I'm Matt with Ozark Overland Adventures. And in this video, I want to talk about gear. Um, I see a lot of comments on social media with, uh, you know, people bad mouthing the gear people use, people making fun of people with high end gear, people making fun of people with budget gear. Um, and it just got me thinking, how much of a difference is there? Is the, you know, you hear a lot about the overland tax for, you know, any gear that's got the word overland in it, it's gonna cost three times as much, that sort of, those sort of jokes. Um, but I, th I think some people actually believe that. I've been very fortunate um, on this channel. You know, when I first started out doing this, I, I, I was and I still consider myself very cheap. <laughs> I don't like spending a lot of money. Um, especially unnecessarily. But as the channel has grown, I've gotten the opportunity to work with different companies and companies reach out to me, ask me if I'd be willing to test stuff. Um, I can afford better gear now. And so I, I've run the gamut of starting out with just super cheap budget stuff, even things purchased from, you know, garage sales and, you know, Facebook marketplace and that sort of stuff to, I mean, now, I, I've got some really great stuff. And so it, it, it just made me wonder, is there, is there a difference? And so I started taking a look at a couple different things. You know, you, um, the subject always comes up when you talk about cookware, um, you know, cook stoves, that sort of thing. So I've got some cook stoves that I've been checking out, um, some sleeping bags, camp chairs, totes. And then of course the, you know, the, the ground tent versus rooftop tent debate. Um, and so I have been spending the morning just kind of piddling around in my garage, um, comparing things. And so that's what I want to do in this video. This video, let me be very clear, this video is not me telling you that if you're going to do this overlanding, car camping, whatever it is you want to call, you know, vehicle-based adventure travel, um, but this is not me telling you, you, you gotta have the high-end gear uh, because that's not true at all. Um, this is also not me telling you that the high-end gear is not worth it. Uh, because I'm going to show you some areas of how it is worth it and why. Um, so th this video is not those things. So I do not want to see in the comments about how, you know, any of that crap. Uh, so just uh, walk with me on this. Let me, let me show you what I found. And, you know, at, at the end of the day, you've got to choose the gear that's right for you. You've got to choose the gear that's right for your budget. And there's definitely some good use cases, pros and cons for both, you know, the, the budget gear and the high-end gear. So that's what we're gonna get into. Ozark Overland Adventures is proudly supported by The More Expo, the Midwest's number one adventure travel consumer expo. Artemis Overland Hardware. They have one of the largest selections of overlanding gear available. Big Iron Overland Rally, where Overland Expo meets music festival. Shop Overland Apparel your source for Ozark Overland Adventures merchandise and more. Open Road Four Wheel Drive, makers of affordable, high quality winches and recovery gear. Outback RV of Texas, the best place for Overland Adventure trailers. And Moon, makers of the Moonshade Portable Awning. So when you're looking at the difference between you know, budget gear and high-end gear, Typically, the higher end gear is going to do one or maybe all of four things. It's going to save you time. It's going to save you weight. It's going to save you space. And a lot of times, but not all the times, but a lot of times, it's going to be higher quality. And so, therefore, it will last you longer. Um, and I can kind of demonstrate some of that with, uh, with the camp stoves. So this is the Ozark Trail, just your basic everyday camp stove. Uh, got it at Walmart. And um, honestly, it's a, it's a lot thinner than I remember these things being. My first camp stove I got through Facebook Marketplace for five bucks. It was an old Ozark Trail camp stove. And that thing, you know, served me well for, I'd say about a year um, until it started to fall apart. But, uh, but this, I, I went and spent $34 on this. This is the Ozark Trail Camp Stove. Um, it's, uh, it, like I said, it's, it's very thin, um, but there's some, there's some weird things about it. Um, 
first of all, um, this uh, it, it, it's, it is nice that it has a, a holder for the for the gas connector, um, but uh, it it actually doesn't fit flush. There, there's no way to there's no way to fit that flush down in there. So as you you know, if you're packing this, if you want to set this down flat, well, it 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 won't because that's that that sticks out, which is which I, which I find to be odd and you know clearly a design flaw. Yeah, you know, when you're pinning 34 bucks on a camp stove, you can't expect for it to be perfect. Uh, but it uh, it is it is quite thin and compact. Um, you just fold that out and then you fold these and you very firmly push those down in there. There we go. Uh, let me get my, let's see, that's on this side. I, this is not unique to this camp stove. It would be super handy if camp stove companies would either standardize on which side um, your, your your propane connector is gonna gonna go on, so you know before you buy it how that's gonna work. Um, or if they somehow made them where you could put them on both sides. So any any propane manufacturer, Ozark Trail, Coleman, GSI, Jetboil, if you're listening, that's great. I just just let just do both sides or standardize. Y'all y'all all get together in a meeting and pick. It's gonna be on the left side. It's gonna be on the right side. Or it's gonna be in the middle. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so let's take this and here's, um, I mean, this thing, it's, it's all three of these stoves are total 20,000 BTU. Each burner's 10,000 BTU. So all should be the same, you know, same heating performance, cooking performance, that sort of thing. But, um, this, uh, this doesn't have a clicker. This doesn't have a way to self light so you if you're going to get a stove like this you gotta um you gotta bring a lighter or something i actually looked all over the house this morning for a lighter could not find one so i'm i'm lighting my stove with a with a flint there we go now i highly doubt you can see that flame very well but it is it's on high um but the, the frustrating thing to me about a lot of camp stoves is the flame control. I'm going to turn it all the way down. All right, so if I turn it anymore, it's gonna be off. But watch this, look, at, look how much the dial turns. All right, that, that's, all, that's, that's all the flame there is. So I've got from, from there to there, maybe a quarter turn, not even a half turn. And look, the, the dial keeps going. The dial it just keeps on going. And there's no extra flame control to be had there. This is all just a whole bunch of nothing. It, do, it does absolutely zero for you. So the only flame control you have, well, if I can get there, there we go. So there to there, I mean, quarter turn, that's all you get. And then, and then it goes off. So depending on what you like to cook at camp, um, it can be frustrating if you need like a good medium heat or just want to turn it down to, to low when simmer, um, you know, going with the cheap camp stove can sometimes be a challenge. But does it work? Yes, it works great. It has the same, you know, the same 10,000 or 20,000 BTU performance that the higher end ones have. And uh, it, you know, it looks nice. It's, it's compact. Um, it's, it's well made, but let's, let's look at the next one. This is the relatively newish GSI Pinnacle Pro. Um, we did not buy this one. GSI did not send us one either. Uh, my wife actually won this in a cooking competition. If you didn't see our Big Iron Overland Rally video uh, where she won the dessert cooking competition and won this, go check that out. It's a man, Big Iron Overland Rally, fun event. But this one is, I mean, it is like, I mean, it is super thin. This thing takes up very little space when it's, and it even comes with a really nice bag. Um, but this one is, is super thin. So my wife, she, you know, throws this in the back of a Wrangler um, and, you know, just wedge it between, you know, wedge it on top of something, just slide it between totes and stuff. I mean, it just fits great back there. And you've got these little legs that pop down. 
Then you've got this that comes up. It is, uh, I mean, it is very nice, very well made. Um, and, come on. There we go. And one of the things I love about it, this is another thing, is uh, it comes with a, a nice little flexi hose. I mean, that's, that's awesome for, for connecting. And I, I talked about the whole left and right standardization. Well, GSI put theirs on the back, uh, right there. It's got a little handy dandy little cover to protect it too. So, and then boom, it doesn't matter where your, uh, where your gas line is. This is long and, and flexible and it is absolutely fantastic. And so I love the fact that this is in the middle and includes a flexi hose because um, that makes you know, depending on how you've got your rig outfitted, it doesn't matter where your propane is. It's, uh, it's gonna work. Now, the GSI, look, it's got a, it's got a clicker. So you don't have to, you don't have to have a lighter to start this. Let's turn it on. There we go. And I don't know if you can see the flame on the camera because I can't see it very good out here, but, um, GSI, uh, very nice stove, very small and compact, saves a lot of space, uh, has the nice bag. So definitely, you know, build quality, uh, you know, thinking through, it, it's definitely a major step up from, you know, the little $34 Ozark Trail. But you still got, the knob doesn't turn near as far, so GSI is being a little more honest with you. But there's, there's low. If I turn it anymore, it's going to go off. And then... You know, there's high, so I mean, again, maybe a quarter of a turn, then it's got a little bit more that it can go, but that's that's worthless. That right there is useless turning. Um, let's just get an exercise in. So, the same thing, it doesn't have a lot of flame control here. So, the price of the GSI Pinnacle Pro, 250 bucks. I mean, this one is not a cheap stove, 250 bucks. You are saving some space. You are getting better quality. It is a much better stove than the $34 uh, Ozark Trail. Is it $220 more, $220, $215 more better? Mm, I mean, I'll let you make that decision. But um, like I said, we won this one. Uh, we actually were going to buy it for my wife's rig because in the back of a Wrangler, space is limited. So the fact that this is so thin uh, means that she could fit, you know, fit it better in the back of her Wrangler, which, you know, when you're going out for longer trips, um, space, saving space, maximizing your space becomes very important. So um, for her, this was worth it to have a stove that is this thin and comes in a nice bag, has the, the nicer touches of of this stuff and so for Kara the, this stove was definitely worth 250 bucks but then we got lucky and she won it now let's get to my stove uh, the jet boil jet boil has you know, been a high-end name in the backpacking world for very long for a long time and they came out with this uh, Genesis camp system a few years ago uh, my wife actually bought this um, a few years ago, and I kind of I kind of took it over because I was going out on more trips than she was, and I really liked it, and it fit my stuff really well. But as you can see, this is uh, you know definitely thicker, but that's uh, that's it right there. That's uh, that's the jet boil Genesis, and you fold it out. As you can see mine is well used. I need to clean it, but that's it. It packs up very compact um, compared to you know the, even these other two they may be thinner but they're definitely not as small of a of a form factor and i'll, I'll show you why this one matters to me so much uh, but jet boil you know standard fairly standard connector here uh, on the left side not the right side and not in the middle um, again you got uh, you got clickers to to get your to get your uh, stove started. So let's turn it on. There we go. 
And that is, that is all the way. Now the amazing thing about the jet boil is if I'm turning this knob, I'm actually impacting the flame. There's, there's no dead space on this knob and the amount of adjustability that I have with this thing to dial in my flame is unlike any other camp stove I've ever seen. So if I keep going, I'm gonna turn it off. But that is just a very, very low flame. Every time I turn it. There, now I had to go all the way to actually get it to be all the way. Um, every bit of this is usable. <laughs> the jet boil base camp, just the, the basic base camp here, $270. Um, so this is definitely the most expensive camp stove that we have. And for me, it is absolutely worth it. Um, just because of how small it packs up, how good of a quality it is. I am the primary cook at camp. And so I love the, the fine tuning of the, the stove heat that I can get. And uh, to me, you know, for something this quality, this compact, and this awesome for the things that I like to cook at camp, this is absolutely worth it to me. Now, let me, I should have said this at the beginning. If you are, you know, a weekend warrior, you know, at most you're going out four times a year. Um, and, you know, maybe setting up base camp, wheeling in an area, that sort of stuff. You know, if you're a weekend warrior type of, if, if that's your style, um, if that's what you have time for, um, it, it, the, the gear probably doesn't matter to you. Um, you know, if, if you're just going out a few weekends a year, yeah, having something like this um, is, is gonna be great because honestly, you're not gonna care. Um, if you are like us or like me, where I'm going out sometimes weekly, multiple long extended trips, in a year, that's when this stuff really starts to matter and the benefits of the higher end gear comes into play. Um, and for the jet boil, I'll show you why this is my stove above any other. This is one of my totes. I keep two of these in the back of my Gladiator. I'll actually get into totes next. Um, but this is, my, this is my tote. They're identical. Um, the, uh, the, the cheap Walmart, it, it, it doesn't fit in my tote, which means this thing's gonna have to be loose and just, you know, out banging around somewhere. Uh, the GSI Pinnacle, very nice stove. Doesn't fit. It, uh, it, it won't fit in my tote, so I would have to have that out laying around somewhere. The Jet Bull Genesis. Fits perfect. So that, the, the fact that I can put that in my tote have it handy, protected from the elements and from dust and um, you know, clinking around. That, uh, that's the number one reason why the jet boil is what goes in my Gladiator. Does the, does the $34 Ozark trail stove work? Yes. Is there a solid use case for it? Yes, absolutely. Um, is anyone gonna look down on you because you pull out the Ozark trail stove versus the jet boil? No, no, um, I, I, no one's gonna care. It depends on what works for you, for your budget, for your style of wheeling. And I mean, even if you, uh, you know, own, own a jet boil and you never use it, but you can afford it and you like to have nice gear, who cares? Who cares? So if, if you own a jet boil and you've never used it, but you like it and so you have it and you, you got the money and you bought it, good for you. You spend your money your way. Um, if, if you have a million dollars in the bank, but you're thrifty and this, this works for you for your you know, couple wheeling trips a year, awesome. But if you're going out on longer trips, multiple times a year, um, and you, you need quality, you don't want to hear this you know, in the back of your rig all the time, um, you want to make sure that at the end of the trip it's going to last, it's got, you know, it fits in the right spots, then yeah, get, get the good stuff. It, it, it actually has, there, there's reason to own a Jet Boil or a GSI Pinnacle versus those Art Trail. So there's stoves, let's, let's go to totes.
Totes is another thing that I see get asked a lot on all the social media, um, you know, Facebook groups, forums, that sort of thing. Uh, comments on YouTube videos. Um, people asking, what totes are you using? What, what works? What doesn't? That sort of thing. And totes is definitely something where you can, you know, get the job done with something very cheap and inexpensive, or you can spend a ridiculous amount of money on totes. Um, and, that, and that's where a lot of people, you know, get in. They see people with, uh, you know, the Rome cases. Those are the, the famous ones, the Pelican cases. And people just go bonkers about how expensive that stuff is. And why would you use something like that? That's just, that's just, yeah. So this is, this is a Plano, a, a, a Plano um, sportsman's trunk. I use this in the back of my Wrangler, back when I had my, my JK. And this, this tote served me very well. Um, the, I mean, Plano totes, uh, I mean, they just, they work. They're not fancy. They're, they're fairly thin but they're straight, fairly straight walls and you can put a lot of stuff in here. And if you are, you know, wheeling out of the back of you know, an SUV, like a Wrangler or a Forerunner or something like that, then something like this makes a lot of sense. Um, because of one thing, you, you don't have to deal with the elements. All your stuff is protected. So this is what I used. Uh, this one was mine. Uh, I think I paid like 40 bucks for it at Academy or somewhere, I don't even remember where I got it. Um, but it's, uh, I mean, it works. But I switched to the Gladiator. All of my gear is in the bed of my Gladiator. Um, if I was using this one, this one is not dust proof. This one is, I mean, it's, I don't think water's gonna get in here because of the way the, the, the lip is designed on it, but uh, it's definitely not dust proof. So I did not want to be going down the trail and all of my stuff get, uh, get, get dust all in it. So I got this. This is the 70 liter tote by 23-0, very similar to the Rome cases. I mean, almost identical to the Rome cases, the 23-0 boxes, the Rome boxes, almost identical. Um, but this one is a lot thicker material, sturdy metal latches, lid that uh, is on hinges and has a strut to keep it up. Um, it's, it's just a lot better constructed than the Plano boxes. This thing sliding around in the back of my Gladiator, going over big obstacles because I like to take the hard lines. Uh, when I'm on the trail, I think getting bounced around and you know, all my gears in here moving around. Uh, this thing is crazy tough. And most importantly, it is fully water and dust sealed. So I know, I mean, my gear has been in here on many, many trips and there is no dust getting in my gear which is what mattered to me. It's got you know, real strong metal handles. It's got a drain plug. So if you've got stuff in here and um, you know, it spills and you need to wash this out, it's got a drain plug. So you can, you can drain your stuff pretty easily. Um, but I have been, I, I've been using these since I got the Gladiator, so about a year now. And these things are incredible. Now, the Plano Tote, 40 bucks. This one. $270 uh, for a box, but it is a really good box. And if you are wheeling in the back of a truck bed, I think, you know, uh, where totes like this are worth the money. Um, I, I would never just use Plano totes in the back of my, my truck bed with the trips I go on because everything's going to get dusty and it's just not going to hold up um, for the type of stuff that I do. Now, um, you know, can you use Plano totes in the back of a truck bed? Yeah, absolutely. My buddy Nathan, when he had a ZR2, he loved his Plano totes. Had, I think, two or three of them that lived in the back of his, his truck bed. But he didn't go on as many trips as I do. Um, he, he wasn't out as often as I am. And so, you know, weighed the pros and cons and $40 tote made, made sense. Um, he did actually upgrade to Rome boxes later on. Um, but then he actually sold them because there was too much and went back to the Plano totes. So there's, there's no right or wrong way. It's what works best for you. And for me, this works best for me. 
If you're in a Wrangler, my wife doesn't have the fancy, the, the fancy totes. So they're all weatherproof, weatherproofed and everything. She, she doesn't need them. So she's got cheaper totes. Uh, so whatever works for you. But for my case, this, this is, is fantastic. Um, did I buy these? I, I kind of, um, I traded a buddy of mine's a 23 zero dealer. He had two of these. I had a, a Jackery 500 that uh, we weren't using anymore. And so I traded, I traded a Jackery 500 for two of these and it's a win-win. So we, we bought the Jackery 500. So we, we kind of bought them, but would, would I spend my money on these? Yes. Cause for my setup, it's worth it. Up next, let's talk sleeping bags. Cause this is an area that I have evolved in over time. Um, you know, you can get sleeping bags at Walmart. The number one thing you're going to be looking out for is the temperature rating and you know, how you're going to be using it. You can stack multiple cheap sleeping bags and stay nice and warm and cozy on a cold camping trip. But um, that takes up a whole lot of space. What I've got here are three different, uh, three different phases of my camping life. This is, I don't even know what brand this is. I think Ozark Trail, but I got this at a garage sale for 10 bucks. And it's a 40 degree bag. And it, uh, you know, when I was you know, springtime camping uh, in my hammock, this, uh, this thing was fantastic if, uh, you know, if, if you're sleeping in a ground tent and just need a, a, a basic cover to, to keep you warm, um, you know, a, a cheapo sleeping bag like this works great. Um, it absolutely works great. I was starting to venture into more colder weather camping and I, I had bought a mummy bag. Personally, I hate mummy bags. So I don't like my feet being all cramped up. Um, so I bought a, a, a decent mummy bag from like Academy and used it for a little bit, but I hated it, how confined I was. And then I found this one on Amazon. It's by a company called Teton and it is a 20 degree bag. Um, no, I'm sorry. It is a zero degree bag. The Celsius XL is what this bag is called. Um, I am not going to pull this thing out because it is so big. It is a huge sleeping bag. I got, I got so ticked, tired of the mummy bag and just being all confined and I couldn't, I like to twist and get on my side and sleep on my side and stuff. And so I just, I, so I got the XL and I loved this sleeping bag um, for sleeping in my hammock because it was just real warm and cozy and I could sleep in really cold weather in it and absolutely loved it. But it is a big, massive sleeping bag. Um, and when you are you know, in something like a Wrangler, which is what I had at the time, space becomes a premium. And as you can see, this is a, this is a big sleeping bag and it can, it can compress a little bit more than that, but not a lot, but that's, I mean, that takes up, you know, if you're on a, a long-term trip in the back of a Wrangler, um, that takes up a lot of space and you got to find a place to, to stuff it. And it's not exactly, you know, packing friendly because it's a soft little Tootsie Roll shape. Um, and so this is one of those things where I, I never would have spent the money on this. But now that I have it, I'm, I'm never going to live without it. Um, and that is this guy right here. Um, this is, this is a, a quilt. It is a down quilt. It is a 20 degree quilt. And it is a custom quilt quilt and oh my gosh I've shown this on a couple other videos but I just love this thing it feels so warm and cozy the down inside just is so lightweight and it is so warm and so comfortable I actually when I first started getting serious about my YouTube channel I just randomly reached out to them and asked if they would send me one to review. And they said, yeah, sure. And I have just since fallen in love with this. I mean, it packs down so tiny in, in the little stuff sack that it fits just about anywhere. For me, it fits in a tote uh, with, with other things. So that is a huge deal for me when I'm packing up and going on a, a 10 day trip or you know multiple trips, this type of stuff then matters. And then I, I now camp year round. So I'm camping when it's, you know, I got eight inches of snow on top of me. 
uh, like I did last year in Kentucky, and this thing kept me so warm. It was incredible. So um, this uh, $10 uh, garage sale sleeping bag, this one, $80, $85 from Amazon. Big, bulky, but comfortable. This custom down, awesome blanket, 380 bucks. $380 for this guy. And I, if, if, if something happened this tomorrow, I would drop 380 bucks on this in a heartbeat because I never want to live without this sleeping bag ever again in my life. It is, it, it is that awesome. And it packs up so small and takes up so little space and it is so warm and so cozy. Um, you know, I've got friends that are you know, diehard uh, hammock campers and you know, they swear by stuff like this for backpacking and that sort of thing. And I, after getting one, I absolutely love it. And so if I ever have to pay my own money for another enlightened equipment uh, quilt, you betcha I'm going to, because this is worth 380 bucks to me. Enlightened equipment, uh, high dollar, but high awesomeness. Sleeping bag, top quilt, um, Teton, 80 bucks from Amazon. Uh, I think it's an Ozark Trail $10 garage sale. Uh, all of these work, but you just got to figure out work, what works best for you. If you got the space, man, go with go with this. If you just if you just don't you know if you need need to pack it up into something really small cinch bag and have something that is just super warm and cozy and top of the line like this, go for it. I don't care what you bring out at camp. If it's this, 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 uh, or you know your mama's, your grandma's crocheted blanket, um, nobody's gonna care. You just will get what works best for you. And last but not least, let's discuss the subject that has been beat to death and continues to be beat to death on all the Facebook groups, and that is ground tent versus rooftop tent. And I mean, there, there's a lot of reasons to pick one or the other that, uh, that is completely irrelevant to budget. Uh, some people just, you know, can't stand sleeping on the ground and uh, critters being able to potentially get in their tent and they feel much safer up high in a rooftop tent. There are people who um, have bad knees and so climbing up and down a ladder in a rooftop tent is just not an option for them so they choose to go ground tent. Um, but in every one of those discussions, price always comes up. And so, whoa, well, we don't want to spend 10 times as much on a rooftop tent as I would a ground tent. Um, and there's, there's some valid reasons why. Um, me personally, hate ground tents. Absolutely cannot stand them. Um, I don't like sleeping on the ground. I don't like all the extra gear you have to take with you. Um, you know, the, the cot or sleeping pad, and you know the, just taking everything from your rig to the ground tent you know for the trips that i go on um, i i just absolutely hate the thought of a ground tent having to have, you know find a nice smooth level um you know, level ground to to sleep on just so many things make me pick a rooftop tent over a ground tent but i mean if like i mentioned the colorado videos that are releasing as this video has come out um uh, there were six of us uh, on that trip. Um, three of us slept in rooftop tents. Three slept in ground tents. Nobody cared. The, the ground, the, my ground tent friends, they didn't care that we were sleeping in a rooftop tent. Uh, my rooftop tent my friends, you know, they, nobody looked down on them for sleeping on the ground um, as if they were, you know, you hear the term ground dwellers. Um, it's, that's just stupid. It's just so stupid. I get so sick of it. But, um, you know, I, this is uh, a tent, uh, Coleman. Coleman's been a trusted brand in, in tents for, for years. Uh, this is one of their new ones, their Carlsbad. It is labeled as a fast pitch setup. Um, I, I'm, I'm not convinced about that <laughs> as I actually have set this up. Um, uh, it is a, a fast pitch setup and we'll, we'll see. Um, but, you know, I, I, I'm going to set a timer, set this up as fast as I can, and then I'm gonna do the come, you know, set my rooftop tent up and tell you why I think a rooftop tent 
is worth 10 times as much, or actually, I guess, 20, 20 times as much as something like this. This one is a $140 tent from Walmart, um, which is middle of the road, I think, for a decent ground tent. You know, something like a gazelle tent, it's like $400, $300 for a gazelle tent, which primo tents, by the way. If I was going to be sleeping in a ground tent, it'd be a gazelle, most likely. Um, but um, $2,400 $2, for my rooftop tent. So uh, let's, let's go set this one up. All right, here we go. Um, let me get my phone. Pull up my stopwatch. Reset it. It's, uh, it's at zero. So I'm going to lay it on the, the trunk of, of my daughter's car here because I'm going to I'm gonna speed this way up so you don't have to actually watch me set this up um, in, in real time because that would be painful. Uh, so here we go. Start. And I'm going to put this right here so y'all can maybe you know, kind of keep an eye on it, hopefully. But I'm not going to touch it. And here we go. Six minutes, 38 seconds. Obviously I'm not done. I haven't staked it down. Um, I have not put cot or air mattress or anything on the inside of it. So probably another good four minutes to, uh, to actually finalize this. So we're gonna say, we're gonna, we're gonna say 11 minutes um, for the ground tent. Now, Imagine you get to camp, it's raining. That's 11 minutes spent setting this up in the rain and dealing with, with all that. Let me show you my rooftop tent. All right, starting the timer again. Here we go. Put that right there. Two minutes, 38 seconds, and I'm ready to get in there and go to sleep because all my bedding's up there, my pillows are up there. Uh, it, it's ready to go in, in that much time. So imagine being on a 10 day trip and every day you get to camp, you either spend 11 minutes plus setting up that, setting up the, the ground tent, or you spend two and a half minutes setting up that you roll into camp 10 p.m late you're just tired and ready to go to bed two and a half minutes boom i'm up there going to sleep 11 minutes i'm, I'm dealing with that and then add on top of that imagine if it's raining so I, I get that deployed super fast some of it i'm actually undercover while i'm i'm dealing with it versus just 11 minutes worth of getting drenched in the rain before going to bed. So that is the difference between $140 ground tent and a $2,400 rooftop tent. I want to drive this home again because I want to make this crystal clear to everybody watching this video. It does not matter if you show up to camp with a, a, a $140 ground tent or you show up to camp with the $2,400 rooftop tent, or like my wife's eye camper, a $3,400 rooftop tent, or even $5,000 rooftop tents. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you're getting out and you're having fun. So, I mean, if you're, if, if you're just going out a few weekends a year, you're setting up base camp, a $140 ground tent makes sense. You're not gonna care that it takes you 11 minutes to, to, to put the tent up and longer than that to pack it away. Because I mean, getting a tent back in the bag that they give you to put it in, I mean, that takes some engineering feet right there. Um, I'm not even putting that on camera because I don't want you to, just, to see that disaster. Um, but if you are going out for extended periods of time, a week, two weeks, multiple times a year, and you're setting up and breaking down camp, 
night after night, morning after morning before you know, hitting the trail, that's where two minute and 30 seconds set up. Two minutes to take it down, um, three minutes to take it down. Um, every single day starts to add up and it starts to matter and you start to get, um, you know, you, you appreciate the fact that, you know, that 2,500 bucks is saving me a lot of headache and a lot of effort and a lot of, um, you know, just dealing with crap, um, not having to set up a ground tent every single time. You show up to camp with me, I am not going to care one bit. If you get out of your rig and you open up your $380 enlightened equipment quilt that you purchased with my affiliate link that's in the description, you know, every, if you click on that link and you buy it, I make like, I don't know, four or 5% off that sale. I'm not going to care if you get out with that enlightened equipment quilt that you purchased from my affiliate link, or you get out with that, you know, sleeping bag that you purchased at a garage sale for 10 bucks. No one's going to care. Not, not one bit. So, um, let's, uh, let, let's, let's, let's try to end the whole given a flip, what gear anyone else is using. Uh, if they're, you know, just using cheap stuff they bought at Walmart, great, they're getting out. If they have all the money in the world and they have rooftop tents and max tracks and high end cooking gear and never go out. They just like the way it looks on their rig. Yay for them, your rig looks awesome. Or you're like me and you're going out on, you know, sometimes weekly, overnight, so multiple overnight, multiple day trips, multiple times a year. And so there's, there's value in, you know, quick setup, saving space, saving weight, higher quality to last through the abuse. Um, you know, if that describes you, awesome. You're, you're getting out there, man. You're living the dream. So let's just, let's just, uh, who cares what people are doing? Is there, is there an overland tax? I don't really think so. Um, I, I, I think there's a, a case for the gear being higher priced than the other gear. Um, so anyway, I, I would love to know your thoughts. Put Put them in the comments. Good, bad, indifferent. Would just love to know what you think about this subject. What do you think about the gear that, that I've demonstrated here? Um, some of it, there's links in the description. Some of it, there's not. Um, so if you, if you choose to use it, awesome. If you don't, I don't care. Um, but I do appreciate you watching. Thank you so much for, for taking the time to, to sit through this video and hopefully learn some things. Um, at least hear me rant about, you know, the idiots on social media, um, you know, caring about what, how other people spend their money. Um, but if you would, you know, give the video a like. That helps YouTube know that this was a good video and gets it out there. Um, subscribe. I mentioned that already. We've got a goal, 75,000 subscribers. Help us out there. Um, if you like what we're doing, you want to support us, you like the content that we're creating, you want to get access to special content that we put out, events that we hold, um, and access to our GPS data, uh, check out our Patreon. The uh, link is in the description. Check out our Patreon and consider uh, supporting us that way. And uh, for Overzark Overland Adventures merchandise, preferably you know, not pre-sweated, um, not you know ground tent setting up sweat, you know shirts, but good good new clean shirts. Uh, go to shopoverlandapparel.com. Appreciate you. See you next time. Bye.